How Taylor Swift is that? Hi! Today we are going to be listening to the brand new Taylor Swift album from Taylor Swift called The Tortured Poets Department. Big night on my channel, big night in my personal life. This is only the second time I've had the pleasure of covering her album on my channel, but I love Taylor Swift. I've been a Taylor Swift fan since I was like 15 and her music is so, so dear to me and, and so important in my life. So this is my favorite kind of album release to go into because we haven't gotten any singles and we're just going to experience it in full the way it was intended. But even just knowing the title, I feel like like if you know Taylor, she just manages to perfectly encapsulate the vibe of the album in the title of the album. And I feel like we already know so much just knowing the title. So if you think about the word torture, it's not just a regular kind of pain, it's a very deep, very dramatic kind of pain. It's often two-sided, where someone is causing you pain in the hopes of getting something from you in return. And you think about the word poets, and that's, you know, not only someone who's writing to express their emotions, but someone who's writing to bring beauty out of a bad situation. And I think that's always what Taylor does with her music. And you think of the word department, which is like an organization or group. And it feels like she wants to bring a sense of community to this album. Rather than it just being her story, it's going to be all of our stories. I also wanted to talk about the album cover because the second I saw it, it really stuck out to me as to how intimate it feels. That makes me believe this could be a really, really personal album. And she's gonna let us into some of her like deepest, darkest thoughts. And then I also want to talk about the track list, which is just wild. Um, some of the songs sound super heartbreaking and some just sound batshit crazy. And I don't know which ones I'm more excited to hear. But regardless, all of them sound extremely emotional. And my theory is she wrote this album when she was in a highly emotional state after the breakup. Um, but it is midnight. <laughs> it is midnight. The first track on this album. I can't believe this album's real. The first track on this album is called Fortnite featuring Post Malone. I just want to press play on like the seventh track. I was supposed to be sent away, but they forgot to come and get me. I was a functioning alcoholic till nobody noticed you're the reason. Is this from her perspective or someone else? Personal. This is the most personal album she's ever released. <sighs> Wait, this is really reminding me of This Is Me Trying. Maybe functioning alcoholic. I don't know if she means that literally or it's a euphemism. I don't know if I use that word correctly, but if it's a, a euphemism for her losing Joe, I don't know. I, like, there's so much to unpack here in this, in this first song alone. My brain is like already melting. Gorgeous, gorgeous song already. I mean, it's gorgeous. For a fortnight, we were forever running. I know a fortnight is a period of two weeks. So it doesn't necessarily go along, but like obviously her and Joe were constantly running from the media. They were the hunters, we were the foxes. Is anyone okay right now? Like first track, I'm dead. Like I was a functioning alcoholic. I, is that real? Like <laughs> Because obviously poetry is super metaphorical. Okay, let's just get right back into it. Post Malone is going to come in here now.
I'm sorry, I looked ahead. She mentions Florida. She's not allowed to do that. I'm just a bit confused. <laughs> Your wife waters flowers and then she changes it up. Your husband is cheating. I want to kill him. Kind of a, a, a justice vibe. Can we talk about how boppy this is though? Like, I don't know how she's going to simultaneously destroy me with, you know, the most beautiful lyrics she's ever written. And then I'm also over here bopping. Like that just doesn't, that's Taylor Swift, I guess. I here he comes. She died, she's dead. That was a beautiful song. Post Malone, he was not as there as I thought he would be. He was there, he did have a little bit of a verse, but I couldn't really tell what he was saying. And the way that I saw the production, it felt like it was spiraling and you were just like spiraling into the song and like going deeper and going further. And I don't know, I just had this sensation that I was like going down a hole or something. And so I don't know if, if that was like the whole of the darkness of the song or what, but I was going down a hole. Can I listen to Post Malone's part one more time? Like, will you guys hate me? Yeah, I mean, his part is very subtle. I can't really make out the words super clearly. It feels almost like this faded, distant memory. Um, the next track is the Tortured Poets Department, the title track, the titular moment. Pots and pa- I'm getting closure. You left your typewriter at my apartment Straight from the Tortured Poets Department the catchiest melody I've ever heard in my life. You're in self-sabotage mode, throwing spikes down on the road. I mean, immediately imagery that reminds me of Maroon, just because of how specific it is. And it reminds me of like, you know, we were cleaning off the incense of the vinyl shelf. You left your typewriter at my apartment straight from the tortured poet's department. God, that's a good line. And who's oh, hello, Midnight. Chocolate, we declare Charlie Puth should be a bigger artist. Fall asleep like a tattoo, golden retriever. But I've read this one where you come undone. I chose this cyclone. I chose this cyclone with you. I chose to be in this dark place with you. Like I did this to myself. Wow. Wow, like wow. I mean, these lyrics are beautiful. The picture painting, you know, the very, very specific details, ultra specific. You smoked then ate seven bars of chocolate. I scratch your head, you fall asleep like a tattooed golden retriever. What does that mean? I'm there, like I'm there. This sounds to me like whoever she's referring to is in a toxic state of mind, but she loves him unconditionally. You're in self-sabotage mode, throwing spikes down the road, but I've seen this episode and still love the show. I've seen you do this before, but I still love you. Who else decodes you? Like who else can figure you out? Produced by Jack Antonoff. Okay, I do wanna look up who produced the first track. It's gonna take me seven hours to listen to this album. Okay, Jack was on the first track as well. Okay, let's keep going. <laughs> It's almost like a desperation in that line. Sometimes I wonder if you're gonna screw this up with me. But you told Lucy you'd kill yourself if I ever leave. And I had said, Who's Lucy? There's a lot of heaviness in these lyrics already. At dinner, you take my ring off my middle finger and put it on the wall. People put wedding rings. Darker production coming in. 
It's ooh, it's heavy. In your heart. The builds of these songs are so subtle, but so impactful at the same time. It's like you don't even notice it's building and then all of a sudden you're like, wait, we're in a totally different place than we were at the start of the song. Twinkle, little twinkle, little Midnight's vibe. Wow, super cohesive with the first song already. I'm definitely like feeling like this could be a super cohesive album. Obviously we should talk about the bridge. At dinner, you take my ring off of my middle finger and put it on the one people put wedding rings on. And that's the closest I've come to my heart exploding. That is such a beautiful, sad line because we know she's not engaged, at least not that we know of. And so it feels like loss. And it feels like I was so close to getting that happy ending. And who else is going to love you as much as I did? That's just very heavy. I guess we'll keep going here and... <sighs> I just already feel like circling back to those first two. We're gonna go on to My Boy Only Breaks His Favorite Toys, which keeps reminding me of My Boy as a montage, which just destroys me because that was like one of my favorite lines on Midnight's. Also reminds me of Better Than Revenge. She should keep in mind stealing other people's toys on the playground won't make you many friends. Here we go again, the voices in his head Call the rain to end our days of wild Review, let's descend my plastic smile. But you should have seen him when he first got me. Yes. My boy only breaks his favorite toys. Guess it did too right. Puzzle pieces in the dead of night. Should have known it was a matter of time. Oh, oh, oh. there was a litany of reasons why. Already just such a cohesive album and like it's super boppy. Everyone so far, it's like a very subtle bop, kind of like Midnight's. Here we go again, the voices in his head called the rain to end our days of wild. The voices in his head. That's interesting. Cause again, it just makes me feel like whoever she's referring to has something going on mentally. The sickest army doll purchased at the mall. Why is she an army doll? But you should have seen him when he first got me. First. Pull the string and I'll tell you that he runs because he loves me. He loves me. Because you shouldn't see him. Oh, that line is so genius because when you think about pulling a string on a doll and it just vomits forth words that it's told itself over and over again. And that's what she's doing. Oh, she keeps doing that. I mean, wow. <laughs> that really reminded me of Castles Crumbling. You know, the building up of the, of the relationship. It's so amazing. It's such a castle of strength and, and love. And you picture your entire future with that person and then it all just comes crumbling down. And that is such a debilitating feeling. I think sometimes we downplay how heartbreaking and how awful and how debilitating a breakup is because we brush it off like it's just a breakup but it's it's not just a breakup like breakups are very damaging it was a perfect song in my eyes um the next song we're going to be listening to is the song that i personally am claiming it's called down bad the only reason i'm claiming it is because i had a crush on a guy recently and i kept telling my friend i'm so down bad for him i just think of it as being so entranced by someone you're so enveloped in what you could be and almost like the fantasy of being with them and it kind of ends up destroying you hello <laughs> that's talk about cohesion and then all of a sudden this it almost it almost sounds like someone's voice doing that did you really beat me up just to do experiments on Tell me I was the chosen one Show me that this world is bigger than us Then sent me back where I came from mm. Cosmic love Now I'm down bad crying at the gym Everything comes out teenage petulance Fuck it if I can't have him Staring at the sky come back and pick me up Fuck it if I can't have us I might just not 
get up, I might stay down bad. Oh. Oh, the, f the first verse I thought she said, did you really beat me up? And I was like, wow, where, where are we going? Um, no, she said, did you really beam me up in a cloud of sparkling dust? And that's exactly how it feels when you're so into someone and you're so entranced by them. You feel like you're in that cloud, that lavender haze. But in this case, it sounds like he abducted her for a moment. I knew cosmic love. It was just a moment. Now I'm down bad crying at the gym. This chorus is my favorite part of the album so far. The flow is insane. Everything comes out teenage petulance. Again, I said this was gonna be an emotional album. Like just the height of every emotion. And I definitely feel that, especially with that line. There's nothing like teenage rage. Unreasonable, childish, bad temper over something unimportant. It's yeah. me in a field in my same old town that somehow seems so hollow now. They'll say I'm mm. not safe. So Cornelia Street. Must stay down bad. I got lost my twin. Forget it, forget it. She did not just say I lost my twin. She knew that would destroy us all. All your indecent exposures. <sighs> this dude's an alien. Cause fuck it out. Alien? So fuck you if I can't have us. Fuck it to fuck you. <laughs> Uh, chill. That was my favorite so far. I love the chorus so much. The flow there was insane. Like she went from being like, I was in love, to, now I'm down bad, crying at the gym. Again, it kind of had this like spiraling feel that I will say a lot of these songs have. I just love the lyrics. Like it's just so real. Down bad waving at the ship. She's like, Oh yeah, the ship. I was confused by ship, but it's the UFO. I was like, why are we going on a ship now? Like, is this Carnival Cruise Lines? The next song is So Long London. Pretty self-explanatory. This is also the fifth track on the album, which if you don't know, Taylor always makes the fifth track the most lethal. So, so saw in my mind fairy lights through the mist I kept calm and carried the weight of the rift Pulled him in tighter each time he was drifting away I stopped trying to make him laugh, stopped trying to drill the safe Ooh, does he have, she have a lot of lines about like, I, I made him laugh like no other We were just always laughing And now she's like, I stopped making him laugh I stopped even trying to make him laugh So Found at the club she's heard great things about I left all I knew, you left me at the house by the heath I stopped CPR Stop CPR? This is going back to you're losing me too when she said like I stopped CPR, I stopped trying I was just dragging us along at that point and I basically just let go and you Um <laughs> Yup Okay, this track was produced by Aaron Dessner. No wonder, this has been kind of a switch up. My spine split from carrying us up the hill, wet through the clothes, weary bones caught the chill. What a gorgeous, a gorgeous couplet. Love the line, thinking how much sad did you think I had? Did you think I had in me? She's literally breaking up with London. So long London, you'll find someone. <sighs> When you have that place that you can no longer go and you no longer see in the same light because some sort of relationship has has broken that for you. And it's like, it's one of the worst feelings because people move, but places don't. So you can move on from the person and you can avoid them probably, but you can't really avoid a place that's always gonna be there. We all knew it was gonna be sad. 
but it is. The spirit was gone, we would never come to. And I'm pissed off you let me give you all that youth for free. Mm. Oh, six years of her life. I'll find someone. I'll find someone. And you say I abandoned the ship, but I was going down with it. My white knuckle dying grip. I love the line, you say I abandoned the ship, but I was going down with it. You're not sure if he wants to be there. He was just completely apathetic. Just how low did you think I'd go for a self for a have to go be free? Yeah, I had to prioritize myself at some point. I died on the altar waiting for the proof. You sacrifice us to the gods of your blue estate. Blue. Just getting color back into my face. I'm just mad as hell because I loved this place for so, so long. So long. Learned the stitches. Learned yeah. <laughs> you swore that you loved me, but where were the clues? I died on the altar waiting for the proof. So it sounds like she was ready to get married, but he wasn't. You sacrificed us to the gods of your bluest days. So again, I'm kind of getting that like mental state wasn't great kind of vibe again, as well as thinking about blue was once a positive thing. I'm just getting color back into my face. Like I'm just coming back into it. I'm just starting to feel like myself again. And I'm mad as hell because I loved this place for so long. I mean, <sighs> like, wow, we're just getting, we're getting so much of the story here. And again, I don't know if every single lyric has been about Joe or what, but we're definitely getting a lot of insight and it just, it feels like her most personal album already. It, she is just letting us in to the windows that were boarded up and we're, we're seeing into them. I feel like because the production's more subtle, I can more easily hone in on what she's saying, which I kind of appreciate because it is so lyrically dense and, and so beautifully written and so full of specific details that I feel like if it was crazy production all over the place, I would get super lost. The album's been out for an hour. It's already number one on the charts. I just learned these people only raise you. Just learn these people try and save you Cause they hate you uh -huh. with my dress unbuttoned Screaming but daddy I love them I'm having this baby No I'm not but you should see your faces oh, okay. I know he's crazy but he's the one I want Dutiful thought around my plans were laid I'm so confused. Who are these people? Because at first I thought her parents, but I know that she has a good relationship with her parents. But now I'm thinking it could be like people in the industry. Too high a horse for a simple girl. I think of like not being able to live up to everyone's expectations of you. And as she was growing up and making music, the world put so much pressure on her because she was this role model and she was the perfect all-American girl and she couldn't live up to that because no one can. It was chaos, he was revelry, bedroom eyes like a remedy, soon enough the elders had convened. Kind of tortured poet's apartment vibes. I know I'm crazy, but he's the one I want. Kind of going back to the themes on the album so far. Growing up precocious sometimes means not growing up at all. Sounds like she's referring to herself as immature and kind of childlike in the way that she deals with love. Just screeching ties of true love. Country vibes. Save the most. 
the people in town that I bestow upon my fakest smiles. The one moms are still holding out, but fuck them. Hi, okay. <laughs> I love that layering. Taylor! I really like that one. It was kind of a folky sound. It's definitely about a scandal, like a scandalous love. So that makes me really curious if that was a recent relationship like Maddie Healy. It's really reminding me of like Mad Woman meets I Know Places. Cause she's kind of this mad woman on the run and everyone's just staring at her and watching her. Um, but the next one is Fresh Out the Slammer. This is definitely the one that I've been the most curious to hear. Dark, heavy, different. Now, pretty baby, I'm running back home to you. It has this like wild energy, this whole album. Fresh out the slammer, I know who my first call will be to. Another summer taking cover, running thunder, he don't understand me. Back in winter, silent dinners, bitter. He was with her in my dreams. Handcuffed to the spell I was under for just one hour of sunshine. Years of labor, ducks, and ceilings in the shade of how he was feeling. But it's gonna be alright. I did my time. Now. Oh, wow. The slammer is the relationship. I thought maybe the guy was gonna be the one that was in the slammer and then it, metaphorically. Another summer taking cover, rolling thunder. Sounds like how she hid away with Joe during their relationship. Splintered back in winter, silent dinners, bitter. Really reminds me of Tolerate It for some reason, just like setting the table and he doesn't even say thank you. He was with her in dreams. Hmm, who's her? It sounds like cheating. Handcuffed to the spell I was under for just one hour of sunshine. She was willing to go through the hell of jail just so she could have the one hour a day to like run around in the sunshine. What a metaphor we have here, folks. Pretty baby, I'm running back home to you. Sounds. Fresh out the slammer Welcome, bashes, get the matches, toss the ashes off the ledge. Now that I know better, I will never lose my baby again. Ooh, gorgeous. All those nights he kept me going, swirled you into all of my poems. Now we're at the starting line, I did my time. Camera flashes, welcome bashes. Someone she's been photographed with and gone to parties with. Get the matches, toss, toss the ashes off the ledge. <sighs> what? I will never lose, my, I'm just confused by this verse. Cause she says, get the matches, toss the ashes off the ledge, implying that she wants the relationship to be over. But then she says, as I said in my letters, now that I know better, I will never lose my baby again. I just am so confused as to what certain lines in this album are about. I get toxic relationship written all over this album. I get that, but I don't get certain other things that are going down. Well, we used to sit on children's swings, wearing imaginary Paper rings. But it's gonna be all right. This song is actually illegal. I just thought of that. She needs to go back to the slammer. It's like so hypnotic. Well, that one was kind of the opposite of what I expected because with a title like Fresh Out the Slammer, 
I thought maybe it would slam me. It did slam me emotionally. It didn't really slam me production wise. A standout lyric for me is, my friends tried, but I wouldn't hear it. Watch me daily disappearing for just one glimpse of his smile. And I think this can apply to all kinds of relationships. It doesn't have to be romantic. I've had friendships like this where they gave me nothing, but every once in a while there would be a glimpse. And so I would keep pursuing it even though it wasn't right. Okay. The next one's Florida featuring Florence and the Machine. I was a little bit thrown off by this collab just because I feel like they have such different sounds and energies. However, I do know Florence is a super poetic writer. Her pen game is crazy. You can beat the heat if you beat the charges too. Oh. I guess it must be true. Her vocals. And my friends all smell like weed or little babies. Little babies? Oh. My friends all smell like weed or little babies. Her friends all either smoke weed or their mothers. She's so funny. Little did you know your home's really only a town you're just a guest in. Who is she talking to? They said I was a cheat. I guess it must be true. Weed or a little baby. Florida. I came with my name when it came Well, me and my ghost, we had a hell of a time Yes, I'm haunted, but I'm feeling just fine Got their lace and their crimes And your cheating husband disappeared Well, no one Florence I did my best to lay to rest All of the bodies that have ever been on my body All of the bodies that haven't been on my body? Woo! That's a lyric Is that a bad thing to say in a song? She pulls it, then she. Florida. This is. This is for once exactly what I thought it would be. Florida. That's what you think it's going to be because it's Florida with three exclamation points. I did not expect Florence to have a verse. I'm fully floored at the fact that she is not just singing in the background. The hurricane with my name when it came. Okay, Dr. Seuss. I got drunk and I dared it to wash me away. She has a song called Hurricane Drunk. Barricaded in my bathroom with a bottle of wine. What is happening? Uh, Tell me I'm despicable, say it's unforgivable. It's the dolls are beautiful. Fuck me up, Florida. I need to forget, so take me to Florida. What a crash, what a rush. Fuck me up, Florida. Fuck me up, Florida? Your home's really only a town you're just a guest in. This is so fun. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna lie, that song felt like it was 20 minutes long. Like not in a bad way. I just, that was a lot to unpack, but I loved it. It was so fun. Really loved the ending where they were just like riffing off of one each other, one another. All the bodies that have never been in my body, I laid to rest. In my mind, they sank into a swamp. Is that a bad thing to say in a song? This song is so unhinged. Fuck me up, Florida. I also really liked the imagery. Once again, like the city reeks of driving myself crazy. The next track is Guilty As Sin. Yep. Drowning in the blue Nile. He sent me down. I hadn't heard it in a while. My boredom's bone deep. He's a paradox. I'm seeing what? What if I roll the stone away? What? <laughs> the 
gonna crucify me anyway? What if the way you hold me is actually what's holy? I choose you and me religiously. What? Okay. What if he's written mine on my every thigh on the This gave me like false god energy. Like I'm gonna be with you even if other people say it's wrong. I love the chorus. What if he's written mine on my upper thigh only in my mind? That was such a gorgeous line. One slip and I'm falling back into the hedge maze. What a way to die. Like I'm just, I'm continually going back to you even though it's, it's bad for me. But I loved that one. The sonics of it were definitely some of my favorite on the album. Uh, the next one is Who's Afraid of Little Old Me? I guess we'll just keep going with this very confusing time I'm having right now. The who's who of who's that is poised for the attack. If you wanted me dead, you should have just said. Leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street. Crash the party like a record scratch as I scream. I, I am, to be honest. You should be. Love that darkness. <laughs> the scandal was contained. The bullet had just grazed. There's so much talk on this album of a scandal. It's so confusing to me because I, I don't think that people were against her. And Joe, I mean, maybe it was about someone else. I thought maybe one song. <laughs> maybe one song about Maddie, okay? Oh my God, it's a double album. What? <laughs> the anthology. Oh my God, she would. Well, she, okay. Then we could all just laugh until I cry. I was gentle till the circus life made me mean. Don't you worry folks, we took out all her teeth. Who's afraid? I love when she screams. Should be. Just how disturbed this has made me. The black dog. You wouldn't last an hour and be asylum where they raised me. Okay. Yeah, a lot of people sing um, it's an asylum. Like the little Instagram video she did was an asylum. It's hard to react to this album on camera. Like it just is. I want to get off camera and study the lyrics and just take it all in, um, but I'm happy. I'm happy to be recording this. I'm happy to be sharing this with you guys. I love doing these reactions. I'm just letting you know, it's a lot to take in. And I, I am literally in denial that there's a second part of this album. I'm always drunk on my own tears. But I'll sue you if you step on my lawn and I'm wretched. Mm. It's mad woman all over it. Put narcotics into all of my songs. She does though. You still sing along. Though I leap from the gallows and I levitate down your street. Crash the party like a record scratch as I scream. Is this about her power in songwriting? I was tame, I was gentle till the circus life made me mean. Don't you worry, okay. but I took I was tame, I was gentle till the circus life made me mean. So maybe she feels like fame has changed her in some way. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of the album. I think I need a switch up of the sound um, a little bit just because it is getting a, a bit repetitive sonically for me. But 
the lyrics continue to keep it interesting. But the next one is I Can Fix Him. No, really I can. Um, I just read a post of someone who said this is like a podcast, like it's so honest and very true. It's easily her most raw and honest. Like there's no contender. No other artist could have written this album. And that's what's scary about her. And that's why we should be afraid of her. A smoke cloud billows out his mouth like a freight train through a small town. Yeah, imagery. Far too loud. They Not Joe. God help her when I tell him he's my man. But your good Lord doesn't need to lift a finger. I can fix him. No, really, I can't. Love that. Oh, only I can. His hand so callous from his pistol softly traces hearts on my face. God, I, why do I feel like she's in love with a, a ranch man or something? The smoke cloud billows out from your mouth like a freight train? His hand so callous from his pistol softly tracing hearts on my face? She's like in love with a cowboy. Cowboy like me. He had a halo of the highest grade. He just hadn't met me yet. Saying God help her when I tell him he's my man. Love that melody. Good Lord doesn't need to lift a finger. I can fix him. No, really I can't. It's the narcotics. Good boy. That's right. Dog. I'll show you heaven if you'll be an angel. I can handle me a dangerous man. <laughs> God help her when I told him he's my man. This is but you didn't need to lift a finger. I can fix him. No, really. And at the end, she realizes she can't fix him. That was one of my favorites. Major like ghost town, no body, no crime energy with the production. I could almost see the tumbleweeds in my mind. The guy in question was coming out of the saloon doors and like, <sighs> and that's her man. The next one is L-O-M-L, -L, which considering how this album is going, I originally thought it was gonna be love of my life, but I could see her taking it in many different ways throughout this song because she continually changes the lyrics of these songs throughout. She does that a lot in her music, but particularly with this album. I know people had the theory like, love of my life, loss of my life, lesson of my life. I could see that. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful, you know. We embroidered the memories of the time I was away. I thought I was better safe than starry-eyed mm. I felt a glow like this Afterglow If you know it in one glimpse It's legendary You and I go from one kiss to getting married You suit and tie in the nick of time religious references on this album love of your life. but that's not l-o-m-l -L, that's l-o-y-l when your impressionist paintings of heaven turned out to be fakes well, you took me to hell too oh and all uh, those two lines when your impressionist paintings of heaven turned out to be fakes <sighs> She thought it was heaven, but it was hell. Wow. A con man sells a fool a get love quick scheme. If you know it in one glimpse, it's legendary. What we thought was for all time was momentary. Still alive, killing time at the cemetery. You should talk to me under the table, talking rings and talking cradles, dancing phantoms on the are they second hand embarrassed that I can't get out of bed because something counterfeits dead? Oh, wow. It was unnecessary, should have let it stay buried. Interesting.
interesting that she says it was unnecessary. Because sometimes you go through a relationship, you realize that it's not going to work out, you break up, you still don't regret it. You might take a lesson from it or just realize that there was a lot of good in it. But for her to call it unnecessary, that's just a really harsh way of putting it. I think it really sums up how she feels about the relationship. Damn, this one. Wow. I feel the dreams in both in fire. I'll still see it until I die. You're the loss of my life. I don't have any words for that song. That was just absolutely beautiful definitely one of my favorites the piano was gorgeous it was really subtle once again not a ton of production on this album but i think it's pretty tastefully done i was glad for the switch up of piano with that one because again i feel like it's getting a little bit repetitive sonically but i just gorgeous lyrics it sounds like you know, he sort of promised the world and then didn't deliver. Everything he said was exactly what she wanted to hear, but it wasn't truthful. I can do it with a broken heart. A lot of people, myself included, thinking this is going to be about tour. But based on how this album is going, I can't see her. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I can read your mind. She's having the time of her life. There in her glittering What's that sound effect in the background? Will you make it in a good lights, camera, bitch, smile, even when you want to die? He said he loved me all his life. All the pieces of me shattered as the crowd was chanting more. Cause I can do it with a broken heart. I'm so depressed, I act like it's my birthday. It's so sarcastic. Me realizing I've been holding my breath. I've been doing it since he left. I've been doing it with a broken I heart this whole time. His things in drawers, crucial evidence I didn't imagine the whole thing. Midnights. She's like, I'm a professional. Like, miserable. <laughs> of my job. Wait, what'd she say at the end? Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I like. I don't know what to say anymore because this is just an experience that I think speaks for itself. Wow. I, I just, I, I. I don't have words because that is the most honest, vulnerable song I think she's ever written, at least in terms of like her fame. You know, she went on the Eras tour and everyone saw this smiling, happy person who was there to entertain them. But in certain moments on the Eras tour, I felt like I, I definitely saw how heartbroken she was. I don't know, man. <laughs> like when you really think about it, it's really heartbreaking that she feels like she just has to show up and put on a face. But I know she's talked about the Eras tour and, and said it's like the best thing that's ever happened to her. And I do wonder if that's because it provided a distraction. Um, I don't know. The smallest man who ever lived. All right, let's see who it is. Was any of it true? Starry eyed. In your Jehovah's Witness suit. Who the fuck was that guy? I just want to know. If rusting my sparkling summer was the goal. Beautiful lyric. And I don't miss what we had, but could someone give a message to the smallest man who ever lived? In public, showed me off, then sank in stone oblivion. The push pin line reminding me of my boy only breaks his favorite toys. But you showed me off in public. 
Joe and Taylor were spotted in public. Lucy, stop it! Denial is a river in Eden. And sank in stone oblivion. Ew. I looked up the Jehovah's Witness thing because I was confused about that. Maddie Healy is known to perform in suits. It could be about him, but something tells me this is not about Maddie Healy. Lucy! Were you writing a book? Were you a sleeper cell spy? In 50 years will all this be declassified? And I'll say good riddance. Cause Gracie? Now And that was the moment I knew that you are what you did. And I'll forget you, but I'll never forgive the smallest man who ever lived. God, that one was just cutting. It was just cutting. She took that person out. That last line at the end did kind of make me think of Maddie Healy. She said, you kicked out the stage lights, but you're still performing. The lyrics on this album are so dramatic. Sabbed me with your push pins. I, I would have died for your sins. Instead, I just died inside. Lyrics like that, that are so, so dramatic and emotional and exactly what I thought we would get from this album. Again, the album title, the album cover. This album just makes you almost beside yourself with how this relationship must have been for her or these relationships. It's just insane how toxic she makes it sound. It's just really a lot of information to process. Like every single line is coming for someone. The next one is the alchemy. I picture like a witchy willow on the era's tour type energy. This happens once every few lifetimes. Keeps going back to like this once in a lifetime love. Touchdown, call the amateurs and cut them from Touchdown. Who are we to fight the alchemy? Hey, you. These bugs warm the benches. We've been on a winning streak. The benches. This was like, ah, uh, it's so obvious, like touchdown. Call the amateurs and cut them from the team. These blokes warm the benches. These blokes, is she in London? We've been on a winning streak. It sounds kind of like a power couple anthem. Did you guys see that um, that TikTok song that went viral? And it was about Travis getting the ring. If you want the ring, I want one too. The greatest in the league Where's the trophy? He just comes running over down, call the amateur This is so on the nose Cause the sigh on your heart Said it's still reserved for me These chemicals hit me like a white She definitely put chemicals into this album Okay, that one was really pretty I really liked it the chorus. I feel like I'm not saying as much about like Sonics as I normally do in my reactions. And that's just because so many of the songs are very, very similar in terms of production. As I kind of touched on earlier, it's getting a bit repetitive for me, but like I'm still enjoying it because I do like the sound of this. It keeps it moving. There's a beat. You know, I think some of the choruses just have a really gorgeous flow to them. So I'm not like mad at it by any means. I'm like, I don't know how I'm gonna listen to a whole nother album with this sound. Again, because the lyrics are so dense that I, I just feel like my brain's gonna explode. But the next track, the last track on the Tortured Poets Department, album one is Clara Bow, silent movie actress who is known as the It Girl. I guess her mother like sent her to a psych ward or something. So this should be fun to unpack. One of my subscribers agrees with me that the smallest man could be about what's his face so but whoever that song was about it sounded like a one night stand and then he just left the next morning but in public you know love to show her off 
in private just didn't have the decency to, to treat her right. Anyway, Clara Bow, let's finish this off. Well, we're not really finishing it, but. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. What is that? I love that. You look like Clara Bow in this light. Remarkable. I'm not trying to exaggerate, but I think I might die if it happened. Die if it happened. I'm not trying to exaggerate. But this whole album, it is an exaggeration to an extent. And I don't mean that like her feelings are invalid, but these lines are obviously all exaggerations. Like she literally wouldn't have died for someone since. Small town, thought I'd see the lights of Manhattan. This town is fake, but you're the real thing. Breath of fresh air through the smoke. Oh, I think with this song, she's talking to her former self. You look like Clara Bow in this light remarkable. Did you know you'd be picked like a rose? I'm not trying to exaggerate, but I might die if it happened. No one in my small town thought I'd see the lights of Manhattan. Wow, that's really sweet. I really like that as a concept for a song. Oh, I like this one a lot. <laughs> look like Stevie Nicks in seven Oh, she had the hair and the, yeah, and the lips. Wish I still had my eclipse glasses. Again, I'm thinking maybe she grew up in a really restrictive small town or something. This town is fake, but you're the real thing. Literally talking to herself, like, you're doing great. Everyone around you sucks, but like, keep doing what you're doing and following your dreams. Breath of fresh air through smoke rings? Mmm, could refer to blowing smoke. People could be exaggerating about their potential. Wow. Wow, like wow, right? This town is fake, but you're the real thing. Promise to be dazzling. The crown is stained, but you're the real queen. Flesh and blood amongst war machines. You're Flesh and blood amongst war machines. She's a diamond in the rough. <laughs> Only when your girlish glow flickers just so do they let you know. Oh. It's hell on earth. Them's the breaks <laughs> they I am don't doing great. <laughs> gently, I, I, you that she ended the album with that line the future's bright dazzling when the entire album has just been terribly sad is really saying something because she sounded so hopeless and so down the entire album and then to have that little flicker of hope at the end i think was definitely intentional because everything she does is intentional and beautiful okay <laughs> 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 I can't, like, I, I just can't at this woman. Like, I can't at the fact that she did this. Because in a lot of ways, this is exactly what I, how I expected this album would be in my deepest heart of hearts. Like, it just makes sense that it was like this. Everything about it, the production, the lyrics, different song meanings, it makes sense in hindsight. Obviously, I'm not saying I would have predicted it would be like this. You know, there wasn't a ton of production. It was very lyrics focused, which we kind of knew from the title of the album. The production, I, yeah, I'm not gonna lie. It wasn't like my favorite production she's ever done, but I think it worked well, especially with such 
dense lyrics. The lyrics, obviously, were just straight poetry the entire time. Just gorgeous, gorgeously written, very revealing, very honest. You're just eating up every line, wondering what she's gonna say next. I don't know, it's three in the morning. <laughs> like, do I kind of want to stay up and listen to the second album? Of course I do. But I'm also like, my brain might legitimate, legitimately explode if I do that. I don't know how late a person should stay up listening to Taylor Swift. I'm gonna need time with this album, that much I know, to unpack it, to get all of the different meanings, and, and there's so much, like there's so many layers. I mean, the lyrics of this album just ate, ate up everything. She came for, for many men tonight. <laughs> Let me just say that. She came for blood and guts and with a fury. This really gave me like mad woman, like reputation, bad bitch energy meets sad, forlorn folklore energy. Sad, unhinged, mad, aggressive. If I make a separate video for the second album, just give me a minute. <laughs> Give me a minute. I really hope you enjoyed my reaction and thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me and I will see you guys in the next video.